Ouch. Welcome back, everybody. In this episode, we're going to work on the dial glass a little bit. We'll put in a cord, uh, work on the cabinet a little bit, put it all back together, and have a final demonstration. I'm going to try to clear this uh, lens cover up, or dial cover, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Uh, the yellow it really doesn't affect it doesn't bother me that bad. I mean, it's got a nice tint to it It's just kind of cloudy. I don't know you can see or not um, Maybe you can see that it's a little cloudy in here look through there You can see you can't really see clear um, I bought some uh, lens uh, headlight lens restore and since we're dealing with 1935 plastic versus modern chemicals, I'm going to just apply a little bit to an edge here that I can live. And I'm hoping it's not just going to shrink up. <laughs> so um, we're going to see if we get any reaction first off because that's, that's always an important thing when you're, when you're working on old stuff and dials. Now some of the dials that uh, the phenolic and, and things like that that you get I had one one time that I was cleaning it with mineral spirits. I believe it was on a Philco uh, 3760 or something like that or 61 and the dial uh, I was cleaning it with uh, mineral spirits and I was doing pretty good. It was it was rocking on. I was also cleaning another one side by side with um, with a um, alcohol, and it uh, I messed around and accidentally got uh, the cotton swabs or the cotton balls mixed up, and one swap took the whole lettering off of it. Some of these, some of the plastics and some of the inks, it just is, uh, is really, you got to be careful with. And since this is not replaceable, I don't want to, it doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot to the side there. But. You're supposed to. Instructions say wipe it on and with firm pressure and then buff it with a clean, dry cloth. So I'm just going to do that corner. And if it don't fall off and crumble on me, I think I'll be okay. But I really think that the inside of it, I, well, maybe it's the outside. I don't know. But this we will do both sides. If it doesn't eat the plastic up, let me get something to wipe this with. Okay, didn't seem to crinkle the plastic or anything, so I'm going to take and do what the instruction says. I think I'm going to do the inside first, because I really think that's where it's at. May be wrong. It's hard to tell. I can see an improvement, uh, so I'm going to go back over it again, maybe do it a couple of times, and uh, it's really hard to, to get around the edges or so, but uh, I'll just keep working with it and see what I come up with. Let's see if we can't uh, do a little bit about this finish on this uh, radio. Uh, I've already put a little bit of uh, Howard's Restora finish. Uh, this is the walnut, and you can see it really added a, a shine to it. But as you can see, we've got a few little well, we've got a few little blemishes here. 
a uh, little, I guess, scraped. Um, as you can see, how this is this is real light wall, medium walnut. Then it goes into a, almost an ebony. So I'm going to see if I can't touch this up. I've gotten. Uh, I went ahead and ordered some ebony brown for the darker spots. <laughs> and here's what. And this is really good if you don't want to really, really, really redo a, a cabinet. This, this, there's techniques on the back here using steel wool uh, for varying degrees of damage of the, the finish, but this stuff is really good and I am not compensated in no form or fashion by these folks. <laughs> what I found interesting is I already had this can and I went to order a different flavor and when when it went when it gave me the option to um, choose which size I wanted, this one was about fifty cents cheaper than this one. Go figure. <laughs> so anyway, another thing I uh, ordered some of the Mohawk Pro Mark uh, markers. This is the plum black, and then I also got a uh, warm walnut. And so I'm going to try the warm walnut first, since it's lighter, should be. And let's see if we can do something about this. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this without messing you up. Um, it is coloring it somewhat. Let's go with the darker one and see how it looks. Uh, I believe this darker one's going to be the right color if I can get it to work, especially on this dark background here. And then what I plan on doing is touching it up with with this. That that worked really good. Let me show you another place. Let's say right back. Right here's on the back. This this probably will show better. We can cover up the blemish with this. And then what I want to do, I'll go over each and every one. I guess y'all notice I'm not in my normal setting. But because I'm using this product, it gets into my gas logs. And it makes the gas logs stink for about a day or so. But as you can see, I can just kind of erase this stuff. And then what I'm planning on doing is when I get all this done, going over it with that Restore Finish, and I'm hoping it won't take off the, the coloring of these. But these are chips. These are actual chips in the finish. So, uh, and I'm also, and this is Mohawk. I, and I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever, but I have found that their products are superior to a lot of others. And I'm not downgrading any others. I'm just saying this is these are my favorites. So that doesn't look too bad. Uh, then I'm going to go also, and I'm going to go around. I, I may go ahead and take this grill cloth out so I don't mess it up, and then I'm going to go and darken the bale inside here with uh, with this. And I'll do the. Let's see. Can you see that how this is light here? And I'm just going to see if I can't color it like that and darken that a little bit. So let me do all this off camera, but now you can see that it's, here was one of the blemishes. Let's see if we can, yeah, that, that, I don't like that. And it's a little bit too dark here. Let's see if I can wipe that off. And I did. And I think that I think that looked pretty good. I think it done good. <laughs> it's not going to be 
exactly perfect, but it's uh, it sure took a, a lot of the dings out. Let me do all this off camera, and we'll see how that works. As you can see, I touched it up. Still got a few little blemishes here and there, but uh, I've taken a lot of it away. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this, uh, the regular walnut, and I'm going to use a piece of felt. Now this is the, uh, it says use felt wool, or, and if you're using steel wool, steel wool is for a rougher finish than this. You're wanting to take some ble more blemishes out, but this I'm just wanting to kind of put a, a sheen on it. So I'm using uh, one of these, it uh, goes on the bottom of a chair, piece of felt, sticks to my finger. I can use it that way and uh, so I'm just gonna lightly go over it with some of this and go with the grain and kind of shine it up now let me do this and I'll get back with you Okay, I applied that and then I wiped it off with a clean cloth. And as you can see, it's not going to provide a, a perfect finish, but uh, it really brings out the beauty of the wood. And You know, still has a few blemishes here and there, but uh, it's natural. It's the original finish on the radio. So I think that uh, uh, when we get it all back together, I think it's going to look good. Okay, I'm going to set the dial. Um, I've got my signal generator uh, set at 600 kilohertz, and of course I've got this loose. So I'm just going to bring this up here for now and tighten it at 600. And remember this is a TRF, there's not a whole lot of... Okay, that's roughly 600. All right, let's change this to, let's say 1400. Let me disconnect the antenna. So I don't get a any signal from somewhere else. I'm trying to keep the volume down. Let's swap this to uh, say 1400 or so. Uh, there's 1405, 14. That's around 1400. So we'll run right up here. And that's showing slightly over 14. So I'm going to back it off just a little bit. Kind of split the difference. There's more stations on the fort on, up on the upper end than. Okay, let's go back to 600 again and see where we're at. Let's see, that's four. We got to go up, and if we can get it close, we'll be good. Right there's about 600 or so. So it's a little bit low. So let's go to 900 and see what that does for us. Let's see. There's 900 right along in there. So we're just a little bit low on the 900. So I'm going to adjust it up just a little bit so that we kind of split the difference. And this is just in reference. It's not going to be exact. Okay, we'll go back to 600 again. Let's see. There's that. 
and then we'll go to 1400 again and if we're close yeah well yeah, I'm going too far is what I'm doing and there's thereabouts around 1400 so I'm gonna call that good okay let's uh, see what we can do about that dial now I've tried and tried and tried I tried that uh, uh, headlight cleaner and I tried uh, the Novus and I just couldn't get the scratches and get it clear now I didn't mind the yellowing at all but I just couldn't get it clear so I went to uh, on eBay and uh, Mark Palmquist down in Lillian, Georgia, Lil Lilburn, Georgia. Uh, he's on uh, the internet and he uh, he may, has reproduction dials and I mean, or dial covers and they are excellent. So let's slip this on and see how it works. I'm, I've got to bend these and let me I'm going to use my hand right now to bend it if I can. See if I can get it to stay. Let me give you a close up of it. I've got it back together. And as you can see, uh, the uh, finish turned out fairly decent. Uh, I guess on the video the dial looks really washed out but uh, in real life it, uh, it it's very clear here and uh, I put a uh, cloth cord on it and uh, I reached out to Jim Ryan and he is he and some more folks are redoing some of the West Coast radio there was a book uh, out there, and they're redoing some of it to uh, uh, update and make some corrections of, of some of the things that's in that book. And he sent me a newspaper article from 1932, and there was a Silverman's radio store. And this was 32 in Oakland, California. And so it was opened by Charles Silverman and they they had parts, they had uh, repair, they had a, an area where you could sit and smoke and <laughs> in a living room area and try out some of these radios. So don't know if that is where this radio came from but um, it's a possibility. Um, the Mission Bell um, 35 schematic is very similar to this also, except there are a few components difference. Uh, but on the West Coast radios, you have everybody, they are um, trying to make them as cheap as possible and they're getting the, uh, the parts as cheap and they're getting surpluses and things. So, let you see the back of it. So let's get a little demonstration of a little music or so. This is a heavy little booger, it really is. So let's see. Let me put this on the stand.
Well, have we solved the mystery of the mystery radio? I think we have some more clues, and there is another silver bell I'd like to see inside it, but it's just a little bit too steep to, to uh, uh, it, it appears to be the same chassis, but just a different cabinet, but the cabinet is in really bad shape. So I appreciate you guys hanging with me on this. I hope you enjoyed this series. I've got uh, a dial today from uh, Radio Days. And so we'll be putting that in the uh, Philco Junior ADC. And I'll be looking for that in the next day or so. So, from Larry, from the hills of Tennessee. Thanks for watching.